Hi everyone, I'm Anne from Leaf Livestock and I'm going to demonstrate warping and weaving the beautiful log cabin pattern on my rigid head of loom. This is the step where you load the yarn onto the loom by tying the yarn onto the apron rod and then you'll thread the slots only, only the slots at this point. Start off by using the dominant color and tie that onto the apron rod. And my dominant color is the gray. So I start with that one and I, I warp one strand through a slot and I take that strand all the way down to the warping peg at the end of the table. And then I loop it around the peg. So that will create two um, warp ends. And then I go back and use my non-dominant color and I do the same thing. I start by tying it onto the apron rod. And then the uh, green strand gets pulled through a slot right next to the gray strand. And you take that green strand all the way down to the warping peg and loop it around. And then come back and grab a gray. And take that gray through the slot and take it to the end of the table and loop it around the warping peg. And you'll want to have alternating gray and green, five grays and four greens, and then you end with a gray. And then tie that gray, tie that bunch at the end, and then start again with a gray through the next slot. So you always want to have a side-by-side -side gray at the end of each group of 18 or you can say the beginning of each group of 18 and then continue your pattern. Gray down to the warping peg. Always make sure you're looping your yarn around the apron rod. Don't take it around the cloth beam and don't let it cinch right up next to the heddle. That'll cause problems later. Always take your yarn around the apron rod. During this section of the video, I am winding the warp onto the cloth beam and using a piece of paper in between the warp strands to keep the tension consistent. If you need a warping partner, have someone hold the warp strands while you keep the paper in place and wind on. And wind all the way to the end of the yarn till there's about a foot between the end and the heddle. All right, now it's time to put the gray strands through the hole. And if you notice, right here is the last gray from the last series, and it is in the slot. So we always want to have two gray, which is the dominant color, strands together at the end of the series of nine strands or at the beginning. So this, we can call this the beginning. So I'm going to put all the grays, well, the next four grays through holes because we always want to have five grays doing the same thing in a row. And it's not important to ensure the strands are not overlapping or crossing in the back, but if you do notice one strand is further to the right versus further to the left. You can put it um, toward the left or toward the right. Okay, so here we have five gray strands and holes in succession. And now we'll put the three, excuse me, four, always four in a row green because the green is the non-dominant. So we'll put four in a row through the strands excuse me, through the slots. 
I think it's just easier to pull out the yarns that you're not working with directly at the moment. So now we need to focus on, oh, and that was the end of my bunch of 18. Remember, we tied on um, 18 strands together. So what we'll do next is have the gray strands go through the slots. So I will pull out all the green again so we can focus on the gray in the slots. And I'll only pull out the next couple greens. Okay, so gray in slots. This one's farthest to the left, so I'm going to put it through the next slot. And then there's two grays in this slot, so one will come out and go to the uh, left. And now we have five grays in slots, and this gray will go into a hole. Because it starts the next, the next uh, series, the next pattern of grays and holes. Here we are with five grays and slots, so now it's time to put the greens in the holes. And you don't have to take the strands out of the slots, I just find it easier to keep track. So I'm putting four green strands through holes. Remember the pattern is always five gray and four green. Okay, all right, and there you have it. Five gray in slots, four green in holes. And then I'll just push that off to the side. Now we're ready to have um, gray in holes. So I'm going to take the gray out. I'm taking the gray out of the slot because the gray is going in the holes. Oops. Holes. Gray and holes. Again, if you, if you can keep them from crisscrossing or overlapping and back, cool, but if not, it's not that big of a deal. All right, so five gray strands and holes, and then we'll go back and put the, um, I'm just gonna pull out one green, one green from a slot so I can transfer it to this slot, the slot to the left. Whoops, I pulled a gray. And this is a little bit challenging because the um, grays are on top of the greens and so you may have to peek over the petal and see where you can find a gap in the gray strands. Okay, so I need a green in this slot. All right, four greens and five grays. Noticing that the grays are side by side, one in the slot, one in the hole, and now, since we had grays in the hole, we'll put grays in the slots. I'm going to take out the greens from the slots and just put them over the top of the heddle, and that will allow me to um, easily get the gray into the slots. I missed. There we go. I find it hard to um, videotape this step because the camera is um, right in the way of my hands, or my hands are right in the way of the camera. Anyway, I hope you can see what I'm doing. So I have, actually guys, I have a double gray in a slot, 
but that that is going to that extra gray in the slot is going to pull out and go into the final series of gray holes gray strands and holes okay here are the five strands in slots and then I'll go back and put these greens in holes. You can repeat this pattern, the width of the petal. Just make sure you do groups of 18 and um, if you can get a group of nine, then that's okay too. So, and nine, of course, being an odd number, you're gonna have an extra strand of yarn that you'll just um, not use. Okay, the last bunch. Here we are with our gray side by side, one in a slot, one in a hole, and then all the grays will go in holes for this group. So I'll pull the grays out of the slots and place them in holes. Do you say holes or do you say eyes? I say holes. And then the next step will be to place the final strands of green into the slots. The green looks like mint chocolate chip ice cream. At least the kind that I like, Whitey's in the Quad Cities, Illinois and Iowa. <laughs> Okay, and if you wanted to, you could also pull these out. That'd be fine. Might make it a little bit easier for you to find the slot. All right, so you are done threading the heddle. Notice that you can see the um, four greens and five grays, four greens, five grays, four greens, five grays, four greens, five grays. And then if you wanted to lift that row up just to check hopefully you can still see i think so um, i'm just lifting up the uh, yarn that goes through the holes checking the um, yarn below here's the slot pull it down so this is the yarn in the slots five gray, three green, five gray, th uh, four green, did I say three? Five gray, four green, five gray, four green. Okay, so now we will do the next step of tying on to the dowel. And that's just the same way of tying on um, any other time that you're warping a rigid head of loom. All right, everybody, the fun part, the weaving part. Uh, I'm just gonna weave a couple of picks and then I'll explain more about the pattern and more about things to remember. You alternate gray and green. You'll need to have the pattern of five grays and four greens. You'll also need to make sure that you have enough yarn 
um, going through the shed to ensure that the selvages don't pull in. And when you're weaving with two colors like this, or two shuttles, there are times when you have to lock the yarn in so that it catches the outside selvage. And that time is usually when the yarn is on the same side of the loom. And what you do is you just overlap and, and See how the green helps the gray catch the gray. All right, my pattern so far is one, two, three, four grays. So I'll do another green, beating evenly each time. And then here is my fifth gray, and I have to take the gray under the green so that the Gray will catch the outside selvage. All right. So I have gr five grays at this point. And then I have to repeat gray. And this becomes the number one gray of the next block. So that's one gray. One green, making sure that you repeat the pattern of five grays and four greens. I like to um, set my shuttles off to the side once they've gone through the shed, once I've beat, and that just seems to be an easy way to tell which um, yarn is on top. Now that time I did not catch and loop, so I just um, slipped the gray shuttle through the green shuttle, which then helped me catch the outside selvage. Hopefully that makes sense. So right now I'm working on the one, two, third gray. And I'll go under to catch the outside selvage so there's no floating selvage. And then you're good to go for the next gray. So the yarn I'm using is our homegrown stash. We raise Rambolets and Columbias, um, and then Rambolet Columbia Crosses, Polypays, and Merinos. And I'm pretty spoiled. I have a, a plethora of of beautiful yarns created at um, a variety of mills through the Midwest. The um, gray is the natural color of the animal. He's my uh, favorite favorite ram. One, two, three, four. And his name is Trouble. So this is my fifth gray. And then I take the gray back through and that's what creates the dark line that separates the different blocks. Something that's important to note, because we took different yarns out of slots and holes, there's the chance of overlap, and um, there's a chance of a strand, a yarn strand, being lower and catching in the shuttle. Um, when you put the shuttle through the shed. So just be mindful of that. All right, so I did two grays and now I'm ready to go back through with green. The pattern is five grays and four greens. <clears throat> Excuse me. The gray, they're both DK weight. Um, the gray doesn't look as puffed because uh, probably because the green has been dyed 
but then once it's taken off the loom and um, washed or wet finished, it'll all puff up and fill in the spaces. Okay, so I have one, two, three gray. See how I, I took the gray around so it would lock in the green. All right, you can see the beautiful pattern developing. It's possible to uh, not follow the pattern of five and four, and then you just have longer longer repeats without that extra dark line through the middle. I've done that too with certain patterns and it's really neat looking. And, and there's just all sorts of variations you can create with Log Cabin. I've used four different colors, actually five. So like a yellow, peach, orange, and a different color orange. And then the um, dark color was brown. So you could use a variety of colors and create the repeat that way. Um, you could make smaller blocks. You could make larger blocks. All right, I am ready to repeat my gray because there are five grays. And then here's the first gray of the next block. And if I take this up, this gray up and put the green underneath it. Whoops, you see how I went underneath the yarn. It locked it in. And now I'm ready to continue my pattern. Whoops, I'm getting kind of close to the heddle. And so um, you can see that some of the yarn is crisscrossed here and causing some of the strands to be lower, running the risk of getting caught in the shuttle as it passes through the shed. All right, one, two, three, four grays and four greens. So now it's time for the fifth gray. And there's another of the repeats or the blocks complete. And then I will start the next block with gray. Mm -hmm. 